and welcome to Monday's Micro Moment this week. And what an exciting week it is. It's week number three of my retirement. And it has been so exciting. The best part for retirement for me is that my time is my own. I'm very, very busy, which I choose to be, but it's doing the things that I love to do. So um, just a little bit of news. First of all, um, we're just slammed right now. We have six videos to finish on the pressure canning course before we launch it in early February. And then our kitchen is going to be torn up while they redo this bar and make it straight instead of having an angled turn on it. And so we're going to be without our kitchen for three weeks in early February. And so we're trying to get videos made ahead for that as well. So we're just making videos right and left and like crazy. But it has been wonderful. It's been fun. And of course, it's really great to be home with Jim. We have such a good time together, as you may have been able to tell by some of the things that have happened on our videos and how we laugh with each other. So I'm just going to address two quick things for this micro moment. First of all, um, this past week we published a video on um, making broccoli soup, uh, the soup concentrate. And here it is. This has been in our refrigerator now for about five days. <clears throat> It'll be good in the fridge for a couple of weeks, so there's still plenty of time for us to eat it. A number of you ask, well, can we can this? Can we water bath it or pressure can it? Well, since it's a vegetable, if we could can it at all, it would certainly be pressure canning. But can we can it is the real question. It's very, very viscous, so it wouldn't do the way I fixed it. Uh, and, and of course I knew this, which is why I put it in the refrigerator. The other thing is the USDA does not recommend any canning of broccoli or cauliflower either for that matter. Both of them are soft vegetables and they just break down too easily and develop kind of a strange taste. So I don't ever can anything with broccoli or cauliflower in it. The solution, as far as I'm concerned, if we want to preserve broccoli long term, is to either dehydrate it or freeze dry it and then powder it. Um, and I've done a video on that. A couple of people mentioned that under the video that I included that particular video on making vegetable soups from powders and I give a complete recipe for broccoli cheddar soup and um, right in the description of the video. So I will put that at the end of this video as well. It will be a little thumbnail and you can just click on it. So that pretty much answers the question of whether we can can broccoli soup and the answer is no. I would never take a chance on that. Then um, last week we also did, in fact it was just um, last Saturday, we did a video on um, about grains and um, we answered four different questions about grains and if you missed that video you may want to go back and take a look at it. But a couple of people, in fact three and one in particular, mentioned and asked the question, Pam, do you soak your grain before you grind it? Do you soak your flour? Well, I've never heard of soaking flour, but I looked it up and yes, it's a thing. I know that some people soak grains before they use them. And um, the claims are that it really helps with digestion and this and that and the other. And so as I was going through some of those comments actually earlier today, what I decided to do was do a quick little research. And my gosh, there are a ton of online sites that talk about soaking your grains before you eat them and how good that is for your digestion and on and on and on. Well, you probably know that I'm very particular about who I pay attention to online. Anybody can post anything online. And I'm very scientific minded. And so before I will embrace an idea, I have to go to trusted sources to see what the real story is. And that is exactly what I did with this question about really is soaking grain that much better for you? And, and I found a great article. <clears throat> I usually go to scientific journals. This one it happens to be a medical journal. It is the Journal of Food Science and Technology published in PubMed, which is where they publish a whole lot of um, medical journals and others that I um, trust. The title of this article is Reduction of Phytic Acid and Enhancement of Bioavailable Micronutrients in Food Grains. So what does that mean and what does it have to do with soaking grain ahead of time? Well, 
Evidently, there is an, an acid in grains, whole grains, wheat, all of them, that is called phytic acid. And phytoacid, as this article mentioned, is a food inhibitor which chelates micronutrients and prevents it to be bio bioavailable. Now, translation on that is that phytic acid grabs a hold of other micronutrients, and I'll give you that list in just a minute, and, in, and does not allow them to be free for us to digest them. Now, some animals have a certain enzyme in their digestive system that peels away that phytic acid. We don't. And so when we eat grain um, without soaking and doing some other things to it, then the, those nutrients are locked up and um, we don't get the benefit of them. And so let me give you that list of nutrients right now. It is iron, zinc, calcium, magnesium, manganese. Removal of phytic acid increases bioavailability of many of these. So how do we remove phytic acid? Well, they give four ways that we can do it, and here they are. Oops. Um, first of all is milling or soaking. Well, we demonstrated in Saturday's video that we milled grain. Now, the downside of milling is, in their words, that it, major parts of minerals and dietary fibers are lost when you mill grains. Well, okay, that makes sense. And then um, soaking and cooking is also good, except that the downside of that is loss of minerals and water extractable proteins. So if we soak the grain, we're losing some of the protein and some of the other things too. So many of these processes that we hear about, oh, do this before you eat this food and it's better for you, or do this with the same food and it'll be better for you. They're trade-offs. Everything is a trade-off with everything else. And so keep that in mind as we go forward. So we have milling and we have soaking. The other one, the other two are uh, fermentation and germination. So if we ferment grains, then it also destroys the phytic acid, or if we germinate it. And it says that uh, 10 days of germination resulted in significant reduction of phytic acid in all of the grains that were in this study. And they're pretty much the grains that we um, talk about all the time. It was wheat and rice and corn, and actually oats. So what do we do with information like this? Yes, it would probably help us to digest those um, minerals if we soaked the grain. But you know what? If you want to do it, that's just fine. I'm not going to pay any attention to that because I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to do all the little fuss budget things that um, some foods say that do this and it'll be better for you and then do that. And here's why. Here's why I feel like I am not compelled to do that. Sometimes I do feel compelled, well this is a really good thing and the benefits outweigh the work involved and so I'll do it. But this particular one, I'm not going to do it because I get all of those minerals from other foods and so I'm not particularly worried about. The big concern of why this is important is for third world countries where uh, starvation is such an issue and malnutrition. So yes, in that case, absolutely. But not for most of us. Not for most of us that have a pretty good diet and have a whole variety of foods. I think that it's very interesting to know about that. And you know, I can see why some people would want to do, for instance, sprouted grain bread if a large part of their diet was eating sprouted grain bread. But for me, I eat maybe one piece of bread a day. I'm not going to do it for that. So it's information. I'm putting it out there for everyone to decide what they want to do about this information. It's good information. I trust this information. And um, now it makes sense to me what other people have been claiming um, but not explaining very well on their website. So I thought you'd like to know the true skinny on whether or not we need to soak grains and how imperative it is before we think about eating it. So that's it for today, and we will see you soon with our next video.